What's up guys, Jenkins here from Team Leviathan, bringing you the third installment of my advanced Pudge mechanics series where I'm going to talk about offlaning as Pudge effectively. To figure out your starting build, you're going to need to look at who you're actually laning against. In the current meta, 99% of the time, you'll be laning against a tri-lane, a dual lane with a jungler like an Enigma Chen, or a dual lane with an aggressive offlane dual lane. In each of these cases, it's generally best to buy the I'm going to die items, which are boots, a tango, and a clarity. The boots remedy the fact that Pudge is an innately slow hero with no escapes, and allow you to safely escape from the supports who would just otherwise kill you by walking up to you and disabling you. Moreover, the boots are going to let you beat the supports to the offlane rune spot every two minutes, and allow you to safely mess with the pull with hooks especially in the Radiant offlane where you can mess with the side pull. The Tango is your only regen, so use it wisely to stay in lane and soak up as much experience as possible without dying. Remember, Pudge doesn't care about last hits. In an I'm going to die lane, try not to take any unnecessary risks for last hits that Pudge really doesn't need as a hero. Given that Pudge has low armor and no stout shield with this build, you need to use the boots to avoid as much damage as possible from the zoning supports, so that you don't eat through your tangos too quickly. Don't feel bad about sending out some extra regen to the lane, that sometimes happens. Remember, experience is the most important thing in this lane. Clarity is also of the utmost importance. The reason for this is that in the early levels, Pudge realistically only has mana for one or two hooks before having to use regen and you need these hooks to disturb the support pulls, and if you don't have a hook available for under your tower, the supports are just going to see that and zone you into oblivion safely. If you're in a lane that there's a low risk of them killing you, but a high zoning potential, like a dual lane, you can buy two tangos, a stout shield, and a salve. If the zoning support uses spells to zone, like a skywrath or a silencer, you can replace the stout shield with a stick in this case. If you're in a solo versus solo lane, you can buy a tango, a stout shield, a salve, a branch, and a clarity. And if you don't think you're going to be taking too much damage, you can just save your money on the salve. As soon as you spawn in, buy your items as fast as humanly possible, ask a support to give you one observer ward, and quickly make your way to the lane to place your ward. As a pudge off lane, you don't want to block any of the pull camps. Place the ward in a spot that keeps you safe from ganks, but not in a spot that will screw over the enemy pulls. You want to disturb the pulls with hook. In most cases, you don't even need to use hook. You can just threaten the pulling support by stop canceling your hook animation so that you can just sit there and soak experience for free. At the start of the game, you should block the wave so that the range creep runs in front. Be careful with your blocks though, because at 23 seconds on Dire and at about 12 seconds on Radiant, the creeps are going to start running faster, and Pudge is a fairly slow hero, so it's easy to fall behind when this happens. Hook is the main reason that I think Pudge is an excellent offlaner. Unlike a lot of other offlaners, zoning a Pudge puts supports in some serious danger, especially if they're close to your tower. You don't even need to use Hook, just S-cancel the animation to scare the supports from zoning you and soak as much experience as possible. If you're on the Radiant offlane, you can use Hook to pull the side camp very easily to kill your creep wave. You want to pull this when the creeps are at about your tower, you just throw the hook at the camp and pull one of the creeps. Doesn't even matter if it's a small creep, it'll work. If you're on the dire offlane, your best bet is to just follow the supports around and S-cancel at them with your hook, just to soak experience, because it's quite hard to disrupt the creep wave with the hook on this side. Every two minutes, you should run to the nearest rune and secure it for your mid laner, or take it if your mid laner can get the other rune. It's not important to get runes in this case, the enemy supports will likely get to them until you're a high enough level to actually scare them away from the runes. The most important factor here is that every two minutes, you go missing from the lane. If you go missing at a two minute mark, the supports are just going to call that you went to get the rune, and this is your opportunity to gank mid, with or without a rune, which can be very easy if you have a mid laner with a setup stun. Using a smoke for this gank is very reasonable. If you're getting heavily zoned by supports and you're worried that you can die, it's totally reasonable to bail out to the jungle and get levels. You can check out my Pudge jungle guide for that strategy. I typically build Tranquil Boots first for the speed, the armor, and pretty much the immunity from zoning. Then a bottle. In my opinion, a bottle and Tranquil Boots are the only two absolutely core items on Pudge offlane, and after this you can pretty much get whatever you want to be effective. Some notable builds are rushing an early blink dagger, 
uh, building an urn wand into Blink Dagger, or just a rush, rush of Yules for good setup. Different games call for different builds, but more importantly, you should build whatever you're comfortable with. Typically, I go for the Blink Rush, because I think Blink gives Pudge just insane playmake potential that outshines most other items on any other hero. In this meta, I'm a huge fan of rushing Crimson Guard into Blink and then an Assault Curas. Only ever use this build if you're planning on 5 manning hard, but I think this is a really nice build because you don't need to be aggressive with it. You can just run at towers, 5 man them down, you can even farm the jungle, and best of all with this build, you can farm Ancients when you have your Crimson Guard. And you can get a Vanguard, which makes you very tanky early, which means you survive team fights and get more Flesh Heap stacks. And in this current meta, which is the DAC uh, Chen Run at Towers meta, you get a lot of Flesh Heap stacks by surviving these team fights. So I really, really like this build if you can't necessarily get the early Blank Dagger. After this, if you've survived the offlane, it's just your typical Pudge game. You want to roam around, throw hooks at cores if you're owning or 5 manning or pick off supports and team fights if you're behind or you're in a bad position. Thanks for watching guys, uh, let me know what Pudge item build you use in the comment section below because I really think it differs from person to person because Pudge has so many diverse playstyles. Maybe I'll go into a guide about item builds, uh, this is just an offlane build. Remember to like and subscribe, it really helps me grow the channel and reach more people. Thanks a lot guys.